you guys. So what's up, what's up? So happy Tuesday. I'm like totally excited today because the topic <laughs> that I want to talk about is something that you guys like I deal with and have dealt with for years. So much so that I even did a small little video before I came on here and shared it on my personal wall because I'm like, you know what? I think everybody deals with perfectionism in one way or another, and so I thought I would just talk about this today, okay? Um, so before we get going, though, I want to just tell you guys how proud I am of you. Um, this is a tough time of year, you guys. People are busy. People are not really on their Facebook as much. Um, people are not thinking about working out as much, you know? They might be like wanting to but they're having a harder mental time like getting over them themselves like motivating themselves because um, they know that Thanksgiving's coming up they know that Christmas is coming up they know all these family gatherings are going to happen and so a lot of times they aren't even like mentally prepared to even want you know to um, start on their health and fitness journey so I just want to say to you guys that all the efforts that you're putting in right now, it's going to like quadruple by the time January hits, if it's not going to right now. I mean, it, you will have success right now. You will have those people that are thinking about it and are ready right now and are wanting to go into the holidays with a plan of attack. So you will run across those people. You will. Um, you just have to search harder for them sometimes, <laughs> but they are definitely out there. I was one of them because I previously had lost my hundred pounds. Okay. And I started to get a little relaxed and I was like, Hey, I can actually eat some sweets and I don't see it coming onto the scale. I must be okay. And so I started to like, <laughs> I know I started to relax. And then I didn't see the scale get affected. And then I was like, I'm going to relax a little bit more. And before I knew it, two months had gone by, you guys, and I gained over 20 pounds from October to December or January. Yeah. I was so mad at myself. I'm like, hey, <laughs> I did not gain that 20 pounds overnight. I had to get real with myself. So. There's definitely people out there that don't want to gain that holiday weight, and we just need to talk to those people. So when you're making your posts, talk to those people, okay? As you're, like, making your posts about your fitness and you're making your posts about your eating, talk to the people that care right now. And um, as a tip that I learned from Anita, when you're doing your description in your post, you know how, like, you're doing your story and, um, like, whatever you're going to say? Um, talk to them like you're talking to just one person. So say things like, um, and this is like a marketing strategy. You can say things like, um, remember last year how you didn't want to put on that extra holiday weight, but you went full in anyways, and then you regretted it by January. Um, don't let that happen again, you know? Join me today and we will rock the holidays together and blah, 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 whatever you want to say. But talk to them like it's just one person, like it's your best girlfriend, okay? And you can do that on every single one of your posts because what that's going to do is attract your specific uh, niche market, okay? So it'll get rid of everybody else that you really don't want to work with anyways. <laughs> Because you'll be like, oh, that person will be like, oh, I don't really like that. Oh, I never deal with holiday waking, you know, whatever. So um, talk to them like you're talking to a best friend. And that's really going to help to engage a lot more people and the people that you want to work with. So that's my tip for hitting success club. Okay. So here we go. All right, you guys. So perfectionism. Um, I am hearing a common theme. Okay, and so I do get private messages from, you know, my team members, um, and I hear from my coaches that are hearing it from their coaches, okay? So this is like a common theme that I'm hearing right now, and it's a theme that, well, I'm not eating perfect myself, um, or I've been screwing up and, you know, drinking wine, 
um, eating chocolate, eating pizza. Um, I don't feel like a very good coach, you know, right now. Um, so I'm hearing this common theme. So I must not be a good coach, you know, because I'm like making these decisions. Okay. So here is the realization, you guys. Um, your role as a coach is not to be perfect. Okay. Um, that's not why you signed up as a coach, right? You didn't sign up for um, a perfect life or, you know, to be a perfect coach. You signed up to be you, okay? You signed up to be real, human, flaws, and all, all right? So you need to let that sink in because... Um, you know, that's the thing, you guys. Your struggles are the same as everybody else's struggles. All right? Everybody else in the world has a cookie every now and then. They have a brownie. They have a glass of wine. Um, they don't get their workouts in. You know? I mean, that's just, we're human. We're so human, you guys. Um, and you need to be human. You need to be relatable so that others will want to work with you. Okay. Now, I'm just going to share a little bit uh, history uh, of myself with perfectionism because um, I have dealt with perfectionism for years. So much so, you guys, that I literally, and this is sad. This is like, this is horrible to even think that I used to live this way, but I did. Like every single day, I literally would wake up and I would live in guilt. Every single freaking day, you guys, I walked around in guilt and shame every day. What the heck kind of life is that? Seriously, like no wonder I was depressed all the time because I was trying to live up to this image that I thought I had to be in the perfect health and fitness journey. And this is even before I became a coach. I mean, this is like years ago. Even before I even put on my weight, I was always thinking about what I was eating. I was always like, you know, sorry, I'm like starting to cry. <laughs> I was always like pushing myself to be like the best that I could be. And I don't know where that came from. I mean, maybe it, it came from my childhood and getting rewards when I did good. I mean, I don't know how this stuff I really, really don't. All I know is that most of us deal with perfectionism one way or another. You know, we want to be a perfect mom. We want to be a perfect wife. You know, it's just, it's in so many different areas. And you guys, we just, it's impossible. It is impossible. You know, if we were done, like if God was done with us, we would not be on this earth anymore. We would be in heaven being perfect because that's the only place that we will ever see ourselves being perfect is in heaven. That's it. You know, so down here, we need to, <laughs> we need to learn to be easier on ourselves. Okay. And, uh, you guys, I can't even begin to tell you how much this, this is, it's almost embarrassing to talk about, but I know I'm not by myself, so <laughs> I'm going to be okay sharing, but like, I used to be so into, being perfect, and especially when I started losing my weight. But um, after I had put on my 100 pounds, I tried so many different programs, and every single time the program didn't work, like I got more frustrated and then went, fell more off the bandwagon and put on even, you know, more weight. And then I was being more depressed or living more depressed because what I had tried didn't work. And this, this cycle went on for years. You know, I was Weight Watchers, Advocare, Herbalife, Plexus. Um, what the heck else? I don't know. I feel like I've done every single thing. Oh, Suzanne Summers, no sugar, low carbs, no carbs. I mean, like, I've tried so many different things. I was feeling so desperate to just, you know, feel better and, like, look good. Um, you know, how I used to look in high school. And even in high school, you guys, I was 120 pounds on the dance team, tennis team, very active ballet, dance, and I thought I was fat. Really? I mean, seriously, we are so lame to ourselves. I'm sorry, but it's just like, <laughs> we 
put so much pressure on ourselves to be like in this perfect mold and we're never going to be there. We just can't. It's humanly impossible for us to be there. So knowing that um, I struggle, have struggled with this, I still do, um, how much more do you think the people in this world that we're meeting on social media or in person, like our friends even, you don't know what goes on in their mind behind closed doors when you're not with them. I mean, they might be struggling with the same stuff too, you know? Um, and so it's really important for us to be real with people, real on social media, especially with people that we're getting to know on social media. They need to know that we have cheat days, okay? They have to see that because if they don't, then when they are thinking about coming on board with you or doing a challenge group with you, um, or even becoming a coach on your team, if all they're seeing is your perfect life, they're not going to feel like they can keep up with you. And they're going to drop out fast, like in a couple of days, okay? So it's really important. Um, as we drink our wine, as we eat our cookies, as we um, don't exercise, that we share that stuff. We share our realness on social media and we share it with our family, um, but we com combat with that, though, that it's a lifestyle. It's, a, it's not about perfectionism. It's about long-term, you know, doing the long-term choices. So we might feel like, you know, we're going in with our Thanksgiving meal, let's say, because that's coming up. By the way, in my challenge groups, I always give a pass on Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's. I'm like, just eat whatever you want. You know, I don't care. <laughs> I'm going to eat whatever I want, and I'm going to jump right back on the next day, and I might drink more than a gallon of water the next day because I'll be needing to detox, <laughs> you know. But, I mean, people need to know that you're going to go in, too, because we do. We're not going to be perfect. I mean, like, last year during our Thanksgiving meal, you guys, I really wanted to be on point. And I wanted to show people, I wanted to show social media, my team, my challenge groups that you can stay on track um, with clean eating by making clean eating recipes, okay? And I did that last year and it worked out fairly well. Like I was still able to eat. I had my turkey, mashed potatoes and all of that, but I made it with like Greek yogurt instead of sour cream. Um, I didn't put any of the melted cheese on. Um, and like my, my turkey, I didn't put the gravy on and, you know, like different stuff like that. But I'm going to tell you, honestly, I missed it. Okay. Like the next day I was like, yeah, you know what? I'm cool. Like I felt like pretty good, you know, but I have to admit I missed my gravy and I missed my melted cheese on my potatoes and all the stuff that I normally have. And so <laughs> like this year, I'm just going to go in, but I'm going to do it in smaller um, portions not like big, you know what I mean? So I'm not going to feel like deprived and feel like, um, you know, I missed my mom's like pumpkin pie with all the whipped cream on top. Like seriously, you guys, when I eat my piece of pumpkin pie, you can't even see the pie. It has Cool Whip or whipped cream all over the place. Where's Heather's pie? It's in there somewhere. I don't know. You know, <laughs> and sometimes this might sound gross to you guys, but I don't know if you've ever tried this before. But <laughs> if you do pumpkin pie and you put Cool Whip or whipped cream and then you drizzle it with Hershey syrup, oh my God. It sounds gross, but when you actually taste it, it tastes really, really good. Like the mixture tastes really good. So, so that's what my plan is for this year. So anyway, uh, as we're like going about our day <laughs> and we're talking about like, you know, what we're eating and if we don't feel like working out. Um, you will attract people that are going to be other human beings, yay, you know, that can relate to us. And um, you're going to actually find that more people are going to start coming to you wanting to join your challenge groups, wanting to join your team because they're seeing that you're just not perfect, you know. And um, I've been sharing about my imperfections a lot more, especially in the last six months. I will talk on my social media about how I've eaten a muffin and how blah, 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 like all this stuff, you know? And um, what I was very, very nervous about doing that at first because I actually thought that people were going to think I wasn't a good coach. I literally had to 
like, I, ha I had to, like, write out the post that I wanted, and I was, like, sitting at the enter button, like, I don't even know if I should post it. Like, I had this argument about, like, about it, I and I almost didn't do it, but then when I did, and all the comments that came in afterwards about how thanks, I mean, this is so crazy, you guys. Like, literally, people will have thanked me for being real. Like, they have thanked me for sharing stuff like that because they want to know that they are normal, just like we want to know that we're normal, and we are, you know? <laughs> And as long as we can train ourselves on how to get out of the perfectionism mindset, you guys are going to, you know, live a more peaceful, um, guilt-free, you know, no shame, fulfilled life because you're not putting that extra pressure on yourself um, to be perfect. You're just going to be human and you will be on point and hopefully live, you know, the 80-20 rule, which is generally... Um, uh, a healthy lifestyle is 80% on, 20% off, you know, and that tends to be when you can kind of um, still have results, really good results, and, um, you know, maintain, you know, for life if you do the 80-20. Some people have to do 90-10. It just really depends on your body. You know, I, we all have different body types. So once you get to your, um, to your goal and you're figuring out, like, what you can and can't eat and how it affects your body and that kind of stuff, um, that, that percentage might be a little bit different for you. But for the most part, most people can do 80-20 and be um, fine. All right, you guys. So I hope that this helps you. I hope that it you know, has spoken to you. Um, if you guys are watching the replay, um, I really, really hope that you know that um, you don't have to be perfect to be a good coach. You just don't. You just have to be human and share your humanness, and um, that will attract others to you, all right, and to your team. Okay, so let's do Q&A. So I will unmute, and let's see. Uh, Wait, does that work? <laughs> yeah. <Yay>! Okay. <laughs> all right, you guys, so let's spend, like, maybe five minutes or so doing um, Q&A so I don't take up too much time and I can get my workout in. <laughs> All right, so does anyone have any questions? I have a question this morning. Um, I've been, you know, really trying to work my business with the fall classic going on. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's probably with the holidays and people's mindset being a bit different, like you spoke on. But I have people saying they want to wait because they're really busy right now. They're going to be going on vacation or there just isn't a 30-day or 21-day period where they can stick to the plan on the program or, you know, there's just a lot of different excuses and I want to keep it positive um, and try to get them to, you know, of course, you know, buy a challenge pack and I want them to, you know, get ahead of that holiday bulge, but mm -hmm. I don't know if that's a good way to go about doing it and, you know, close the sale and but focus on, you know, of course, wanting to help them versus just selling them something. Yes. Well, and it's so funny that you asked that because if you guys are in the, um, the new coach university, and I didn't know this because today was Anna's turn to, to do the post, but today's post is all on dealing with objections. <laughs> That's <just> perfect. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> I know. <laughs> but um, I know. It's, it's like, oh, perfect timing. So I just wanted to read just one thing off of what you'll actually go in and read later because when I read this today, I was like, oh, you know what? This is really, really cool. Um, okay. Are you hearing objections? Of course you are. So let's be real. Everyone hears them regardless of how successful their business become, becomes. In fact, the most successful people are the ones who have received the most no's. One of the differences between those who are successful and those who aren't is that they've made it a priority to improve in their ability to overcome objections. And you do this by practicing and trying to overcome objections as you get them, not stopping when someone says no. So then it just basically goes into um, staying positive and um, asking them, you know, a question. Yeah that does not give them the opportunity to say yes or no. So you want to always make sure when you are going in um, and you hear an objection, 
that you don't give them the opportunity to say yes or no, or you want to more do it where it's a yes versus giving them, you know, the option to say no, <laughs> because it's just easier, you know, for people to say no. Um, but you could say things like, um, you know, what are the things that you, that you do like about it? Um, you know, that's, inter that's interesting. Can you share more with me why you have that concern? So that might help with the, um, the holiday one, but, um, I can tell you that what, that what does generally help me is when I say things like, there will always be life. Life is always busy. Always. Can you ever think about a time in your life when you've ever not been busy? Like, I can't. I literally cannot think of a time when I've never been busy. Even when I was on bed rest for a little bit with my pregnancy, I still kept myself busy. <laughs> I was so bored. I'm like, give me books to read. Give me, like, I wanted to do something, you know? So when you talk to people and just remind them, hey, you know, yes, it's the holidays, but then it's going to be New Year's, and then it's going to be, you know, uh, Valentine's Day if you have a sweetheart. Then it's going to be birthdays. Then it's going to be family vacation during the summer. I mean, when are the excuses going to stop? When, when, when does your reason for wanting to get healthy go over your excuses? Like, when does that become more important than the excuses? You know, that's what you have to get them to. How important is it, Laura, for you to not put on weight during the holidays? How important is it for you to have energy to be the best mom that you possibly can? Like, how important is that to you? If it's important, you're going to find the time. And if it's important, you're going to find the money. You know, you just are. Um, if it's that important, you will sell something. That's what I did. You guys, I sold as much as, as of my jewelry and different things that I could to raise the money <clears throat> to come up with my challenge pack. And you guys, I got the T25 challenge pack. That's the most expensive one, 205. So when I hear people say they don't have 140, I, I'm like, I had to spend 205. Yours is only $10 when you, you know, purchase <laughs> with Shakeology. And that Shakeology is going to replace a meal a day. So you're actually, it's like a wash in your budget, really. So you're really only spending $10 that will look like extra um, out of your budget because you already were going to have that meal that you're replacing with the Shake anyway. So, you know. But, yeah, people, a lot of times, they'll just say, like, an excuse because they just might not be ready, you know, or, like, they might need that extra push. Like, maybe you need to be that person that pushes them like I just how I was just talking right now. Maybe that needs to be you. Maybe they need someone like that. You know? Maybe someone hasn't done that for them and they've allowed them to using their excuses. You know? And it's like they're enabling their excuse. You know, their husband might be like, Oh, it's okay. Um, I love you just as you are, you know, and he might, but he also might really like um, a little bit more of a firmer body, you know, for him to hold. Uh, you know, but I do know that the person that you're talking to is going to feel better and be a better mom, wife, friend, uh, sleep better, have more energy. I mean, who doesn't want that for their friends and the, these people that we're meeting, you know? Like, I want the best life for everybody <laughs> out there. And if I could make that impact on somebody, I'm going to try my darndest. But, you know, so you do your best, okay? You do your best to overcome the objections and don't feel like, you have, again, perfectionism. Don't let the perfectionism come in. You just do your best. How would you want to be talked to if you said that? You know, try and put yourself yourself in their shoes. What would have influenced you, um, you know, to make that leap and you know, different things like that? Just leave the rest to when they're ready, you know? You just have to do your best and find those people that are ready right now. And... Um, if they're not ready, then of course, you know, then they become a follow up. <laughs> All right, thank you. Does that help? Yes, that helps. Okay, awesome. <laughs> yes. I get objections every single day. Like, literally every day, it's either money or time. Those are the two main things that I hear almost every single day. So, and I, I pretty much say the same things over and over, you know, because I, I kind of got into the point where I, I feel like they work. Um, like how I just 
was talking. So, and then if they don't work and they're really like, look, Heather, I have $10 in my bank account. Do you want that? Sure. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I'll be like, no, save that for baby diapers. <laughs> but like if they come back and they like tell me like, look, like if they say it like, look, like if they just get real, like and I can tell they're being like real, I'll be like, okay, when do you think you might have the money? Is there a possibility that someone you know knows how desperate you are to put your health first that could invest in you right now. Maybe it could be a Christmas present, an early Christmas present, an early birthday present, an early you made it through another year present. I mean, whatever. Some people celebrate New Year's like that and they do presents. Um, so, I mean, you know, you can ask them if there's anyone else that knows that they want to get healthy and is willing to invest in them. And if not, then find out when they think they might have the funds to, um, to join. And then you just follow up with them. All right. I also got my first I don't like how Shakeology tastes. Yeah. <laughs> um, excuse. So I'm going to try um, just selling the program door instead of a challenge pack to start. And maybe the boosts. I don't know. Has she tried, has she tried the shake before? Yeah. Okay. She just tried it recently. It's a friend of my mom, and my mom gave her some. <laughs> okay. So I don't actually let people do that, okay? Because Shakeology is so important. It's like the cornerstone of making our programs work and having the success that we talk about. So if people don't like it, it's possible how they made it is what made it so they didn't like it. Okay. And I'll ask her how she made it. Yeah. So what I generally do in this case, Okay, is I will ask the person, was it the taste or did it make you feel funny? Like, did it make you feel nauseous or, you know, because then you want to find out like what flavor that they had, because maybe they're lactose intolerant or gluten intolerant and they had a, a whey protein powder and it made them sick. So maybe they need to try vegan. Um, if it's flavor, I'm just going to tell you right now, you guys, I didn't like my Shakeology for about three or four days. It took me several days for me to, my husband calls it uh, engineer. Like, he's like, you had to engineer that shake to make it taste uh, good to you, to you as, as an individual. And so um, each person has to do that with their shake. Some people can just put it in the shaker cup with water, excuse me, shake it, and then they drink it. For me, if I did that, I would want to vomit, okay? And that's actually how I tried it the very first time, is I just shook it with water. I didn't blend it. I didn't have any milk in it, no fruit, no peanut butter, nothing like that. Um, no, I didn't put Splenda. I didn't put any sweetener, nothing. And um, so you need to ask them, each person that, that ever comes to you and says they didn't like the taste, you need to ask them what they did. What, uh, what did they put in it? Specific. Give me specifics. Did you use a sugar? Uh, you know, a sweetener. What did you use? Did you use milk? What type of milk did you use? Did you use just water? Did you blend it? Did you put fruit in it? Like you need to ask them specifically what they did and then let, and then encourage them, hey, you know what? My coach, or because I don't know if you guys have this experience, so you don't want to lie, of course, but you can say, you know what? My coach didn't like Shakeology for about three to four days and she found that she had to work with it to get it to like a formula that she really, really liked. And now she's been drinking it and loving it for a year and a half. And she's never going back. And that's the truth. Okay. So you might want to, if this is a person close to you, you might want to have them over and just try different ways and see if she can, like you and her come up with a way that she likes, you know, and um, see if she might be open to that. Um, one thing that I have found with milk, if they're doing almond milk, and I don't know if you guys, um, have found this or not, but when I tried the silk brand of almond milk, it made it like pudding, and I could barely, yeah, I could barely drink it, and so for a while, I didn't do almond milk, I was doing fat-free milk, and so when, um, uh, when I started doing the 21 Day Fix program, and it said, you know, you had to restrict how much dairy you had, I was like, shoot, what am I going to do for my milk? I don't like the silk, and so <clears throat> I tried the um, unsweetened almond breeze uh, milk and then I was like oh dang this stuff is awesome like now that's what I use every single day 
I like this silk. Yeah, yeah. See? and every, everyone's different. Some people like the coconut milk. You know, some people like, um, I think it's Soyo or something brand. I don't know. There's like so many different brands. I found that um, Whole Foods 365 brand, it gets all gluggy like that. Oh. It's a weird consistency. And I used a different brand like Pacifica Almond. And it was, I don't remember doing that. So I'm like, maybe it's just this brand. So I'll try Almond Breeze. And Almond, see. Breeze. Almond Breeze is my favorite. Because <clears throat> I just, I can do just water and ice with the yeah. chocolate. And I love it. I can do it with and, the, and the it's you know, good. Kind of too. And it's okay that I'm like, uh, because it's okay. We're all different, right? Like, I just, I can't, I can't do it like that. I just can't. Plus, I feel like I don't stay as full as long if I'm not putting some sort of a fat, like a nut butter um, and some fruit. Like, I want it to last like a meal. Like, I want it to go like three to four hours. So, I'll find if I can put like the milk and the water and um, the fruit and the nut butter that it does, you know, stay in my system for a long time. <laughs> So that's what I would do. But yeah, when I run across people like that, um, <clears throat> because it's so important to get nutrition and fitness, um, and in our groups, that's what we focus on, you know? And so if they're missing that piece, they're not going to have as good of results as um, maybe everybody else. Or like, you know, when we put up result pictures, like the, the Autumn Calories ones, or the ones of ourselves, and we're having amazing results, and they're not, and they're like, why are you having la, 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 la? And my sugar cravings, I can't stop my sugar, ah, you know, and you're like, you need to get on Shakeology, <laughs> you know, so you have to do both, it's true. You have to do both. yeah, so I would definitely try and try and get it to her again, just let her know, um, you, you know, you can do the sampler pack if that makes you feel better to try different flavors. Um, and then try it different ways at home, you know. Most the 30 day. Yeah. Yes. And remember, Carl has like a whole thing on that this month. He wants us to talk to people about the 30 day money back guarantee. And he wants people to know it's okay to use it. Like I talk about it all the time with people and I've had maybe, maybe a handful. I, I rarely, very rarely have anyone do a return. It's pretty, it's pretty rare. Thank you. Hopefully that helps. Lori, do you have any questions? Uh, no, no questions. That everything about like the um, overcoming the no and like being kind of picky scares me. Like, yeah. I'm really scared of doing that. And I know this is something that like you have to overcome and that's part of it, like overcoming the no, but it's, it's still like not, that's not me. I'm a pushover. <laughs> Lori. My name is Lori, and I am a pushover. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know what? You need some personal development on that, because I used to actually be the same way until I was forced to get in. And I will tell you, before I became a jewelry salesperson, I had a very hard time hearing no. Um, but then I heard it all the time, and then it was just like it kind of started rolling off my back, and I, I got used to it. And then, like, I didn't really let it bother me really anymore. And it was just like, they're not saying no to me as a person. They're saying no to the products or they're saying no to the timing or they're saying, you know what I mean? So like, if you can get yourself into the mindset, knowing that. I'm fine with no. Oh. I'm okay with no. It's oh. going past the no. Oh. You don't want to upset them. Yeah. And get them to be say no to you. <laughs> yeah. So you're, so it, maybe it's the objection then, like coming back with something to say after the no. Yeah. To, That's what it is. to try and lead them into the sale still? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, you'll definitely want to go into our new coach training because um, there's a bunch of links that, that Anna also included to um, help with objections. And yeah. um, I have some, too, like in the script that's in our team page. There, I have some bunch, the yeah, I have a bunch of objections that I personally use when someone says they don't have money or, you know, stuff like that. Um, but again, it's just putting yourself into their shoes and remembering what it would take for you as a person to hear that would have pushed you into the yes. <clears throat> so a lot of times when you think about it like that, like if you, if you said no, and I, I don't know, I'd have to go back in our conversations. I have no idea if you said no to me, Lori. But, like, if you did say no, I would see, like, hey, like, what, what, would it, what did it take for Lori, you know? Um, so I would just think about, like, what, what it would normally take for you to say 
you know, yes. <clears throat> My mom paid for it. <laughs> I wasn't going to pay for it. Yeah, that's, you did become a coach after the package, from what I remember. I signed up right as... As a coach? Mm -hmm. Okay. But not a work <laughs> coach right away? No, I don't think so. Okay. I bought, I bought two challenge packs from you. <laughs> <laughs> In the same month. <laughs> you, love me, you love me so much. Yeah, I think, the, I think the first time it was not an auto ship or something, right? Uh, I wasn't a coach the first time. Okay. I had to cancel my, uh, one of my auto ships. Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so I didn't get yeah. two technologies a month. We, we all do uh, have come in different ways, but oh definitely go into the new coach university and we'll talk about it later and we're going to get cut off. So I'm going to go ahead and end our meeting. So thank you guys for joining today. I really Bye. hope that this has been valuable for you and I will see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.